So simple things that we will work on. Okay. I tell every kid that be a good person. You have heard from me hundreds of times. So yoga Matka yoga or any discipline coming from uh, let me mute your phone. So any discipline coming from this is old tradition that we say Eastern wisdom. For kids younger ones, aspiring ones, it says, be a good person. So then one question arises, <clears throat> do I have to become good person for others, for parents in the family, for my siblings, for my friends? for the society, for the nation. You see that in the age of coronavirus, we always say if you remain confined inside the house, you follow the rules, you are a good person. So you are becoming a good person in relationship to others. So what we teach, so what our masters teach is that Eastern wisdom teaches, so I have to become a good person to myself first. Right? I have to become a good person to myself. So the next question is what? What it means to be a good person to myself? what it means. Can you say that? No. To become a good person, it means to myself, I think and I speak and I work in peace, calmness, happiness, within and in wisdom. I always think work in peace and speak in Peace, happiness, calmness, love, and wisdom. So then what happens? I'm always living my life in peace, happiness, love, and wisdom. So when I'm living my life 24 by 7, In that peace and happiness, in that love and wisdom, then I'm a good person. To whom? I'm a good person to myself. And when I'm a good person to myself, then I'm always good to others. So our world at this time, the modern world, divides when they ask you to be good. Why don't you behave? Why don't you do this? Do this, don't do this. So then what happens? Our mind is divided. Even my mind thinks of a person, he is crazy inside, but I behave to be a good person. So I'm more stressed. I have more problems. You see that? That is the difference. What is the difference to become a good person for others in the world? Your dad comes, don't behave like this. And he repeat, he has repeated a couple of times, now you are scared. So every time you go to your dad, you hold on something inside. And then you try to behave being a good girl and a boy. 
then we are upset. And as we grow older, then we create a lot of grudges against our parents. So we lose being a good person. When we reach to that adulthood and the youth, Dad, now I am, what do you say? What we say in America, now I am adult, what would we say? Now I am 16, don't talk to me like this. So all that grass comes out, then I'm not becoming a good person. So what is that? I have to be a good person to myself. That is, so if I'm a good person to myself, I have to think what it makes me a good person to myself. And why to be a good person? Let us answer that question. Why to be a good person to myself? Because that keeps me in peace and happiness. Because that keeps me focused. Because that helps me to succeed in my life. That helps me to fulfill all my desires in the world outside. And in a very harmonious and peaceful manner. No, I'm not running after. Now, see one example. Am I obsessed with the phone all the time? So if I'm obsessed with the phone all the time, am I a good person? So I think again and again. So when you think you break up your craziness coming from the mind. You break up, you dissolve your reaction when you think of it. So why to be a good person? It is a simple answer. No, oh, you know, I have seen many young kids, you know, that they they have a good phone and every time it budge and my mind goes there. If my mind is, if I'm very, I'm relaxing and still, how do I relax? I start with my phone. One example. Mom, what is in the dinner? And there is some dish that you don't like. So, we fall becoming a good person. We don't think. So, the first, first answer to become a good person is to think. Think. And think in a right direction. So, when you think in a right direction, what happens? The mind that is crazy, that is obsessed, that is reacting, that is agitated, they start dropping down. Who teaches this? Eastern wisdom, or you can say yoga teaches that. How the yoga teaches to become a good person? First it says start thinking. How to practice yama and niyama? You already know it. By thinking. By thinking, moving in a right direction, not in a wrong direction. Uh, you cannot say it with eyes closed, now I am practicing non-violence. That will not work. You see? <laughs> so yama and yama and yama, I have to think. I have to think in a right direction. So before going to Yama and Niyama, we should understand that Eastern wisdom and specifically yoga guides me through the principles, through the laws to become a good person to myself. So what should I do? I should know the principles. I shouldn't remember the principle. Not only I should know the principle, 
I should remember the principle. Not only I should know the principle and remember the principle, I should think it over. What is non-violence? No harm vocally, physically, mentally. So I know it, I remember it, and suddenly a friend comes to me and I start abusing. So if I don't think, I, sh I know it, I remember it, but then I have to think how I am speaking to any other person. If I don't speak in calmness and peace, it means even I know the principle, I don't apply it. So how to apply those yama and niyama? By knowing the principle, remembering it, and then thinking over it. Am I in non-violence now? Yes. How do I know I am relaxed and calm? My body is relaxed and calm. How do I know I am in non-violence? My mind is not thinking any ill will against anyone. See that? So I'm thinking, I'm knowing it. I don't speak any ill will against anyone. Yes, I'm in non-violence. So that thinking in a right direction, where is that right direction to follow the yama and niyama? So when I'm thinking, it gives me a knowledge. And that knowledge is applied in daily life. That is the true nature of yoga. I know you are very calm. You never get upset. Sometimes you get it. So the moment you get upset, don't blame anyone. Why? I have to become a good person to myself. Go to the room, sit down, do the relaxation practice, and then ask your mind, why you were upset? What happened? Explore by thinking. Apply by knowing the principle and remembering the principle. So in general, to become a good person, when you start thinking, the young kids have a very, even though it may be immature, it may be mature, but it's a raw thinking. Because a man like 50 years of age who has lived his life with a good, bad, high, low experiences, his mind is totally crazy, running after the thoughts, has strong likes and dislikes. The young kids do not have it. That is why I say it's a raw thinking. So there is a big opportunity for the kids to use that raw thinking where to apply these principles. It is very easy for them to apply these principles. So how to apply those principles? First, we know it. We know the principle, we remember it. Second, we understand it. How do we understand? By thinking. Who is this beer guy? The moment you see this beer guy, you know the name and you say that. Ah, the mind is thinking that now he is my teacher. You think. The same way we have to think over these principles. Not simply getting the information, remembering it, but not thinking. So if you do not think about these principles in your daily life, it will not change your life. Second part. Third part, it, once you think over it, and you think over it, and then you have concluded, oh, my mind gets upset when I, when this friend of mine talks to me. So I will avoid talking. 
that is one option. The right option is, oh, why my mind gets upset? Let me do the practice of relaxation, self-awareness. I have given you many practices. Self-awareness, relaxation, mantra, shantoham, a lot of practices. <clears throat> Pick up one and start doing the practice. Then how do you check that you have now that being upset has gone? Same friend calls you, and the mind is still upset. So you say, okay, can I, can you call me after half an hour? Plead it. So in that half an hour, you do the practice. Check your mind. Now you are calm. You are relaxed. You have no grudge. You, your mind is not reacting. And then call your friend. You change yourself. Your focus is on you to become a good person to myself. The moment you do it, your experiences will change and the experiences will change your attitude and behavior. Attitude and behavior will change your personality. And your personality will change your daily life and living. And daily life and living in that state makes you a good person. Did you get it? Did you understand it? Yes. So now let us pick up another great topic. Why to study yoga? Why we study yoga? Uh, the secondary benefits, physical fitness, mental calm, emotional poise, awakening to my true nature. But understand one more thing before we go there. When I said my goal of learning and practicing yoga is to become a good person to myself. Right? So do I create a good person in myself? The answer yoga gives, no. What answer it gives? That we all, every human being is good inside. What is that good inside? Our true nature. What is our true nature? It is my real self. And that real self is full of permanent peace, happiness, love, wisdom, and truth. But then why I get upset? Why I get stressed? Because of the mind. Because of the mind. You know, so it is like something, if someone takes the responsibility of your life, maybe your young friend who is very close, you both are attached. Attachment is a poison. Love is a nectar. So now because you are attached and you have given responsibility to your friend, that he or she can speak on your behalf. And now he or she speaks, you know, I know Sienna, otherwise she is very good, but she get upset and she's crazy. And you hear it, you say, no, I'm not like this. That happens. So the similarly, when the mind takes over the responsibility of who I am, then it causes the problem. Another way to understand that every person is 
has that true nature, that real self. That is, that real self is a common element in every human being. Whether it is you, young, whether it is me, old, or you can say me old because I have gray beard. So many people say, no, 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 you are not young. So it doesn't affect me. Or whether it is anyone, the common, common, common element is real self. That real self is full of peace and happiness, irrespective of the color, age, gender, cult, nationality, release. Yoga finds that true nature in us. So now I was answering why we study yoga. So secondary benefit, physical well-being, maybe mental well-being, emotional well-being, social well-being, professional well-being. But, no, no, I want to know a little more. So when you have, you start thinking about it, no, I can be a good person. I can have a physical well-being going to the gym. Why should I study yoga? So if you think, then you should ask the question. You should always be ready to ask the question from a teacher. Why? So you start thinking. Yoga will start entering into your head. From the head, it goes into the heart because you start practicing. And from the heart, it goes to, goes down to the belly. What is that belly button represent? Action. So you start acting in your life. So the knowledge in the head drops down to the heart. Now the heart accepts that teaching. So when the heart accepts that teaching, then what happens? Then you are inspired. You wake up in the morning and first thing that you do, okay, let me start my practices because I have to become a good person to myself. You are totally absorbed. And when you practice, it further goes down into action in my life, into thinking and speaking and acting in day-to-day -day life. But our master says that yoga actually is done to bring an end to the three kinds of suffering in life. Three kinds of suffering in life. So, first kind of suffering we say Adi Bhautik. So, Bhautik means physical. So, it means suffering caused by or caused at the physical level. You're walking and suddenly you fall because there was a big stone. Stone is physical. Or you get some physical illness. So that is known as to bring an end to the physical suffering. Second is known as Ad, second is known as Adi Devik. So Devik uh, literally translates as uh, godly, but also translates suffering caused by the nature. What are those suffering by disaster, like flood, like tsunami? And like what is happening nowadays, coronavirus. So it gives you the wisdom, the right knowledge. Let me remain confined to my house. Let me see what scientist he says that I have not to touch my face. I have to wash my hands. 
So that comes because I'm doing yoga. I'm not refusing that knowledge or coming from the science. I live into that wisdom. I heard that somewhere in some state, the young kids went out and they were about 10, 15 kids and they started playing. And then the cop came and then they said, go, go to your house. You see that I lose that wisdom. I lose that knowledge. So second, it brings an end to the nature, suffering. And the third is adhyatmic. So adhyatmic means the mental. My mind is thinking always about others, you know, my dad, my mom did this, my dad, my sibling, my friend did this. I'm terrible because of the world outside. So it is my mental and emotional thinking and feeling of anxiety, of reaction about others and about myself. I'm alone. What should I do? No, I feel bored because I'm alone. Why you feel bored? Living alone? Because you bore yourself, you will also bore others. So we have to treat that board. So the third suffering come to an end. What is that? That is mental suffering. Mental suffering. So what did we understand? We understand that we should always know the principles. I should think over these principles after knowing. You think until, say for example, you are thinking of relaxation, relaxation, relaxation. What is relaxation? I want to know what is relaxation, how the relaxation works. How can I do the relaxation practice? And how long I should do it? When I should do it? So you start thinking of it. So the more you think, you get the right knowledge. So let us think of the relaxation today. What is relaxation? So we understand from both the branches of knowledge, science and yoga. So science says there is a physical relaxation, there is a mental relaxation, there is an emotional relaxation, there is a physiological relaxation. You know, that is why, you know, sometimes mm, you have heard in the society with you amongst your friends and pair, I have a headache, I want to relax, let me take two pills and then I will relax. So it's a chemical relaxation. So there are many ways, you know, you can understand that. No, no, don't disturb me. I sleep. That also gives me relaxation. So that is coming from the science. So we should keep that knowledge. Now, what do we say? Relaxation. When you move your mind within when your mind lays within, when it is gathered within, not scattered outside in different directions, then what happens? You are relaxed. How do you say that? Some people will ask you if you are practicing that. So now we think about it, how it is possible when the mind moves inside. So we can give an example, ask them, my friend, what happens when you are in deep sleep? Do you not withdraw your mind inside? Your mind is not there. It does not recognize any object of the world or the person. You don't even hear anything. So you, when you move within, you are not aware of the body. Do you know where the body is in deep sleep? No, you don't know. 
we don't know whether that the body is lying in my bedroom or it is in US or it is in India or it is somewhere else. I don't know anything. Only when I wake up, I know my body was here. I had a sound sleep. So, how we define relaxation? We move the mind within. We ask the mind to live within. We move the mind. We gather the mind within that is scattered outside in millions of directions. So it means that is a practice. Now we know it clearly. Oh, this is the way the mind has to work to do the relaxation. So once you have understood, now let us do it and see how it works. We will follow this knowledge and translate this knowledge into a practice. So just sitting comfortably, eyes are closed. So pay attention to how do we define the relaxation, moving the mind within, living within. The mind is scattered in millions of directions, consciously, habitually, unconsciously. Oh, it is scattered outside. Okay, if I gather within, it will work? Yes. So what we start? We closed our eyes. So what is the meaning of closing our eyes? The mind scatters outside from these sense organs. That is why we closed our eyes. Another part, that is why we acquire the position of the body. Any position of the body will do. But that is not enough. Because if the mind keeps pushing you to move outside, and get scattered through the body. So we have to give some extra treatment to the body. What is that treatment? Patanjali says asana. And in asana, he explains two things. First, relaxed position, comfortable position of the body. So let us make it comfortable. How we make it comfortable? Does that being comfortable will help me gather the mind within? Yes. Why? How, to, how do I know? When the mind is within, it will not disturb the body. It will not move the body. Oh, that is. So I, my mind in that position of the body, goes to neck joint. My mind is looking or moving to the neck joint. I feel the sensation. Not only sensation, I also know the neck joint is comfortable and a sense of steadiness is there. So the mind moves to shoulder joints. So when the mind moves to the shoulder joints, you start feeling the sensation. Continue to feel it. So when you continue to feel it, you also get a knowledge and experience of being comfortable. Good and also experience a sense of steadiness. <clears throat> so when you experience sensation being comfortable and steadiness, it is because you are changing the direction of the mind from outside to inside. 
the mind moves to the entire body slowly, gently, from the top of the head to the toes. When you move it, you feel the sensation. You experience being comfortable and steadiness. Another is interesting part, second preparatory step. We all have a smartphone, it budge, it vibrates in my mind, my ear, he listens to it, but I'm doing a practice, so I'm not. I'm not touching my smartphone. Once I understand this, it means what? There is another smartphone is in your mind. What is that? It ha it you know, some thought enters into your mind and the thought disturbs you. So what should I do? Let the mind has thought. Let it come, let it go. I'm not carried away by these thoughts in the mind. All these thoughts are the smartphone inside. It triggers. Why it triggers? Because they are smart. But we are more smart. Let the thought come, let the thought go. I'm not attracted to the smartphone inside. Once it is clear, we still know what is the definition of relaxation in yoga. So with that definition in mind, now we will do one simple practice. Step. We are already doing the relaxation practice. We prepared ourselves. So move the mind on the head and the neck. Anyone who does this enjoys. The mind is moving on the head and the neck without moving the body. So you feel the sensation. And when the mind continues to stay on the head and the neck for a little longer time, not only you feel the sensation, you also experience stillness in the head and the neck. What should I do? Hold on to that sensation. Hold on to that stillness. Why? Knowledge. What is that knowledge? I'm doing the relaxation practice. And I understood that relaxation practice is moving the mind from outside to inside. How the mind will move when it experiences sensation in stillness? Oh, that is the way. Let me check it again. On the right arm, you move the mind on the right arm. You don't move the right arm to the mind. Body is not moving. So you move the mind on the right arm. Feel the sensation and experience the stillness. Move the mind on the left arm. You're not doing anything. You are playing with the mind. You know, that is why we say, even if we sweat in a sport, we enjoy at the mental level. Look at the athlete who runs so fast, who sweats and tears. The body is totally exhausted, but the mind is so happy. I won the race. Similarly, the preparatory step, maintain that 
being comfortable. So just do the practice as if you are playing with the mind. The mind moves on the left arm. Be there. And feel the sensation and stillness. Move the mind on the chest and the belly and the spine at the, at the middle portion of the body, from the shoulder to the waist, the rib case, the, the rib case and the spine and the belly all. And experience sensation in the stillness. Move the mind on the right leg, feeling the sensation in the stillness. The mind says, I don't feel it. Why? The mind is thinking of something else. Bring the mind back. Move the mind on the right leg. Feel the sensation in the stillness. That is how you bring the mind back. If it is thinking of something else, it's okay. No issue. Thank you, mind. Come on. Look at the left leg. So what you're doing? You're playing with the mind. You're not fighting with the mind. That is the way. We learn and we practice relaxation. The entire body, from the top of the head to the toes, that is good. The mind moves from the top of the head to the toes. You feel the sensation and you experience the stillness. Now, We continue to the next step. So in the next step is a very playful step. Look inside the head. You simply see the space, a darkness, a emptiness. The moment the mind sees, oh, there is nothing here, it's only darkness. You're playing with the mind. The moment you see that space of the darkness, Say in your mind, I'm the peace. Yeah, what? I am the peace. Peace is my essential nature. I'm in peace and happiness. Simply say it. Don't doubt your mind. When you play with the mind, you need not to doubt it. When the mind plays with you, you have to doubt everything. When the mind plays with you, when you are in anxiety, when you are upset, when you are reactive, when you are tired, what is the solution? Practice this. Move the mind inside the heart. Again, see the space there. When you see the space, feel, just say to yourself, I'm peace and happiness. So when you doubt and you say it, the mind is outside. When there is no doubt, you simply say it casually, playfully. What will happen? The mind will move inside, deeper. Uh, one time more. Move the mind inside the heart again. Check you see the space within or darkness. When you see it, you say, I'm in peace and happiness. 
Now the next step is to continue to stay into that state. Why? So that the relaxation and the calm expresses itself from our true nature. What should we do? Again, play. Look at the breath going in and coming out. Do not change the rate and the rhythm of the breath. You are simply watching. The mind is watching, observing, feeling the breath at a distance. Means you're not changing. And now when the breath goes in, count. Mentally, play. In one, when the breath comes out, count out one. When it goes in, in two, out two, in three. That is how it works. So if the mind is asking how long I have to count, it means the mind is trying to go out. Don't listen to the mind. Why? You're playing with the mind. You're playing with You are counting, you are playing with the mind by counting the breath. Mm -hmm. Now do nothing, stop the counting. Do nothing and experience the deeper relaxation and calmness. Experience the physical relaxation. Experience the mental relaxation because the influx of thoughts is minimum. And also experience the emotional relaxation. Mm -hmm. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Om Shanti. Shanti, Shanti. Bring your mind on the right hand. Feel the sensation and the change. Move the mind on the left hand. Feel the change. Do not bring your hands on the eyes until this virus goes out and open the eyes slowly, gently, living into that experience. I see the smile in your face. What happened? You can unmute your phone so that I can see that. I can hear you. I can mute it, but only you can unmute it. So there were some disturbances coming, and so I unmute it. <laughs> no, I should just do this.
Oh, there we go. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, it felt really good because, I don't know, I just felt really nice and I feel really calm and relaxed. Calm and relaxed. Wonderful. That is how we need to approach yoga. 